thank you so much for joining us. What's behind British Parliament's vote? Well, it seems that David Cameron really wanted his Tony Blair moment here, and he was all set to have uh, the support for the U.S. in any strike that would take place in Syria. And that's why he recalled government, he recalled Parliament uh, earlier than their uh, due date of the 2nd of September when they were meant to come back from their vacation. So that showed the urgency with which he was trying to act. But once they were back, the leader of the opposition, Ed Miliband, forced upon him some changes to the motion that he was putting to them. And what was put before the House was, in fact, a very different motion altogether, not one that was advocating immediate action. And then it came with a, um, a, a modification from the uh, Labour Party, the opposition party, and even that was defeated. So the Labour Party's uh, motion was defeated, the government's motion was defeated, and now there is actually almost, you could say, no official position of the UK government on the use of chemical weapons in Syria, and no official position on what they should do next. I see. So how do you explain this divergence between Parliament and 10 Downing? So the divergence is probably due uh, to a reflection of the divergence in the opinion of the nation. The British people are very war-weary after Afghanistan and Iraq, and after they felt that they were taken to war in Iraq, many would say, on a lie. Now, it wasn't a lie at the time, necessarily, but the information that Tony Blair and his government used, um, the intelligence that suggested that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and then the fact that those weapons were never found, hung uh, over the debate yesterday. Seven hours plus of debate in the House of Commons, and that was mentioned several times, over and over again. Here again, they, the British people and the British Parliament seem to want some sort of incontrovertible truth, maybe from the UN weapons inspectors, that actually that chemical weapons had definitely been used by Bashar al-Assad's regime. Now, Mr. Cameron pointed out that there was nobody else who could have used those weapons, of, uh, those chemical weapons uh, in Syria, as did many of the speakers. But this wasn't enough, and people wanted to know what the aim of military action would be, what the extent of military action would be, and whether or not it was legal, as they kept putting it, uh, because they are still remembering and still licking their wounds from what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan. So is this a matter of evidence, or is this truly just a credibility issue? I mean, do, does Parliament just want to stay out of war by all means necessary? If they have in what they see as enough credible evidence, would that make a difference? It's hard to know, and part of this motion was eventually that there would be another motion before actually going to war put before the House. So I think it was Mr. Cameron's desire that this might get through, and then they would be able to vote on actually going to war after the evidence of the weapons inspectors was given. But that opportunity wasn't even taken by the House, and that opportunity wasn't authorized so that he could go along with that plan of action. And of course, the U.S. will be watching this, knowing now that the French were able to mobilize support for their intervention in Syria, that the British, the traditional ally of the United States, who so far over the last decades has gone along with military intervention, uh, has, has not been able to authorize that. So in a way, there are fears among many of us here in the U.K. that this shows a turning point in the so-called special relationship between Britain and America, and that the Americans will be looking on and thinking, is Britain able anymore to assist us in important military interventions like that which is about to happen in Syria? Do you think this will at all influence the U.S.'s stance on Syria? The U.S. has expressed a desire to go on regardless, with Obama even saying that some sort of unilateral action would be possible and that that's what he would be thinking about next. So it's hard to say that this will affect them. As I said, I think that it's far more likely that this will affect the so-called special relationship between the UK and the US. And this may be a turning point that makes people in the, U in, in the US and the UK realize that Britain is no longer such a big player on the world stage as it can't necessarily join in with these important sorts of actions taking place in countries like Syria with the atrocity of chemical weapons used against civilians by a dictatorial, tyrannical regime. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jonathan, Sasha, Dotti. Really appreciate it.